Welcome back or hello to all the new viewers if there are any new viewers today. Today is Friday and that means it's FNA Friday. This is the last part in the series of how to take your animation to the next level, how to escalate your shot using normal exercises or exercises that are used to in class and how to build on top of that and make them just a bit more shot-like, a bit more complex, or just a bit more challenging. We talked about weight, talked about Innkeepers the movie as a good example for weight. And today I'm gonna to talk about more general shots or exercises that you can technically escalate. And again, at any point you can say, stop, I'm gonna just use this part and that's enough in terms of complexities or you can go further, further, further. That's totally up to you. But here are some more examples of how I would approach a shot to make it a bit more complex, a bit more interesting, and a bit more challenging for you. And since I was talking about innkeepers, let's take that as an example. So you have a weight lift, but in this example that I showed, there was conflict. So the character had to put the garbage bag into a container, but it didn't work, so that's the conflict. And now as an audience, you're interested in seeing how the character is going to solve that. So how could you take that example and switch it up. So how about you want to do a creature shot? So let's take a creature that wants to eat. That's all. That's your objective of the character of the creature. I want to eat. This could be a simple exercise, but what could you do to go a bit further? Let's say that the creature, which could be anything, could be mythical fantasy type of thing, could be a cat, whatever, whatever you want to think about, whatever is interesting to you to animate. So let's say that creature is at the edge of a river and the whole surface is snowy and the river water is frozen, except the little section where you have to walk out and the ice is kind of broken and you got a lot of heavy flow of the water and you can see some fish in there. So now you have a lot of different surface changes which can make it interesting for your animation and for the creature to kind of navigate that. So first you go from a snowy surface, so you can take a step and it might take a step and slip a bit or kind of sink in depending on how high the snow is. And then you go from that surface onto the ice, which is very slippery. So that change is already interesting to animate, interesting to watch. So think about the surface properties and how, if there's a change, how interesting that could be. For instance, in Monster Sync, where Mike and Sully, they run and slide and then keep running. And that always makes me think of, when I was a kid, I used to love to run and slide on hardwood floor. And then when you would hit the edge of the carpet, it would do like, oh, and you kind of fall forward. And if you've done that, you kind of know that feeling of your socks or whatever slippery shoes on that surface and how they hit the carpet, how it suddenly stops and how it kind of changes and how you either fall, it kind of propels you forward. Forward. And that to me is already interesting to animate as well, because this is all up to you. There's nothing in your animation software, be it Maya or whatever, that when you take your character and you move it from A to B, that's gonna change how that character moves or slides depending on the property. The property is you decide that and you have to animate that. That to me is always a very interesting and cool challenge. How do you show through your spacing and timing how it's a soft, smooth surface and then going into carpet that makes the foot stop and then the character tumble and so on and so on. So going from snow to ice is interesting to see, but the big conflict is that the character has to go through those two properties, so snow and ice, to that crack where the fish are. So the creature has an objective, it needs to eat. And then you go from snow to ice, a change of properties, a change of behavior, change of movement, interesting to see. And as the creature hits the edge of the ice where the hole is where the fish are, maybe the ice breaks. So that gives you also a change in timing. So you have kind of slowish on the snow, kind of different timing, and then fast, fast, fast on the ice until the character or the creature, whatever, um, regains balance and confidence. And then it's slow on the ice and then the ice breaks and that's fast. And then the creature has to get out of the ice, scrambles out maybe in the process, maybe it happens when the creature iron bites the fish and then it cracks. So the whole thing's happening while the fish is in the mouth, creature stumbles out and slides and slips and gets out onto the ice and onto the snowy surface can then relax and then eat the fish. So you have a lot of contrast in timing where you go from slowish to fast to slow to super fast scramble back to the eyes where it's slow and then relax as it eats. So you wanna have contrast in movement, contrast in timing, and having all those changes in surfaces from the snow to the ice to the sudden crack, all that helps make the shot more about this is the struggle of a creature trying to eat versus I'm showing a locomotion exercise of a four-legged creature. And speaking of creature, again, you can go back to weight assignment, and this is actually something that Mike has done. I suggested something and he has taken that and created his own shot around it. But imagine the character has to lift a box, right? That's your classic assignment. But what if the box is actually a fish, a heavy fish? 
So not only is the surface uneven, so it's not like a clean box where you lift it like this, but it has to maybe hold, the character has to maybe hold the head and then the tail. So that change helps you with asymmetry. Already imposing, it's more interesting and it's helpful to, it kind of forces you to do that. But imagine the fish is slippery. So then you have that plus a lot of re-grabs because the fish is slippery and the character can't hold it. But then imagine that the fish is actually alive or wakes up. So the character has to grab the fish and then the fish comes alive and starts to wiggle around. But then instead of just grabbing the fish and lifting it up, imagine that the character has to take the fish and put it from the loading dock onto a truck or maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's inside an aquarium, it's already alive, it's totally up to you. But imagine it's not just straight up, but a character has to pick it up and move it somewhere. So that change and your body has to change, be it a little bit or 180, is already more interesting and more complex to animate. So now imagine during that process, as the character lifts the fish, the fish is still alive and then starts to flap around and the character has to re-grab. So that conflict, adds more complexities and more interest also to the viewer because you're going, oh wow, that fish is actually alive. What's going to happen next? It's like clickbait. But then you can do something comedic where the fish turns around and at the end he holds the fish upside down, the tail is here and hits the character in the face and ultimately the character can throw the fish into the next piece of you know, a loading dock or an aquarium or another character or whatever it is. But now you've gone from a character just lifting an object to maybe this is the person's daily struggle in his or her job. And it's not about a weight assignment. It's a moment of the character doing his or her job and it happens to involve weight. Now, it doesn't always have to be just pantomime. You can also start mixing and matching other things. So you take a weight assignment, but then you can take pantomime. Then you can take audio. You can mix and match different characters, multiple characters, small and big and creature. So how would you take this whole thing and create a shot? So for instance, let's take the idea of lifting a creature and the creature is struggling. So let's go with that. So this time it's not a fish let's say it's a pig and it's a character that has to take a little pig has to lift it up and the pig is struggling so that's already more interesting and has to put the pig into a truck because the pig has to go to a different owner or get slaughtered i know this could be very dark but you could let's let's say let's go dark let's make it sad so you have a character lifting the pig putting it into a truck on top of that you have a little kid maybe it was the kid's pet or just the kid was just really, really fond of that little piggy. So then you have bigger character lifting a smaller character, and then you have a second character, the kid, that runs around. So that's your complexity of not just standing in place, but running around. And maybe then you can add audio where the kid goes, please dad, don't do this, please, please, please. It's, it's turning very sad, but you know, it could be something like that. So you show weight, it's a character lifting a pig. You add the complexity because the pig is wiggling. You have pantomime where the adult is struggling with the pigs, you have to, like whatever face expressions you have, but you can show some more acting and struggle through that character. You have contrast in acting. So you have an adult character doing things, pantomime, lifting stuff, plus a little kid, how the little kid runs around and looks up and says things, totally different. So you have two different things you can showcase through your animation skills. You have variety in rigs and visuals. Again, it's an adult and it's a kid and a pig, so you have a creature and humans. You have a lot of body mechanics you can show. You have a weight lift, you have a stumble holding on to weight, plus you have a little kid running around or just running from you know left to right, kind of going around, you know, whatever you want to do, but those are all different things that you can show and they're very complex. Plus lip sync. Then you have the kid maybe saying, no, no, don't take him away, or no, dad, please don't, or oh, whatever. I don't know. I mean, it gets, again, very, very sad, but if you take all those elements, you went from Norman or or Hogan or Malcolm or whatever the common rig is nowadays that just lifts a box, which is again, a valid exercise. But if you wanna go further, what could you do? Well, you can take all those elements that I mentioned and now it becomes a tragic shot that happens to involve weight. But now it becomes more about maybe a strained relationship between father and son or mother and daughter, picking something else out. You know what I mean? Like you, can, you can change the characters, you can change the environments and still add conflict in all those elements of pantomime, body mechanics and lip sync, and it becomes a character piece. And you can make it funny, you can make it sad, but all of that is beyond just the exercise. And again, it's subjective, but to me, that's more interesting to watch where you're wondering what are the characters doing? What are their relationships? And it's, to me, at least more interesting to animate than just a simple exercise. But again, don't skip the exercise. You have to go through all those exercises and build confidence and build up your skill sets. And then you can attack a shot that's more complex. There's more you can do using sets and environments, but that is gonna be part of a different FNA. That's gonna be an FNA about how the environment 
can change the acting, but that's a separate piece, a separate series. So I'm gonna stop it right there. I think I've beaten the horse to death. Again, so sad. This FNA is very tragic and sad. But I think I've shown a lot of ways of how to take an exercise and make it more complex, take it to the next level, little buzzwords there. And maybe that was enough for you as an inspiration to go on and do your own thing. If you have your own ideas, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions about any of this, let me know in the comments. Like it if you like this, subscribe and hit the bell button if you wanna get all the updates to all my daily uploads. And as always, if you watch the whole thing till the very end, thank you for your time and I will see you next week for more uploads.